hi there again, Izzy from DigitalGoja.com showrooms. Today we're going to take a look at questions that are being asked about the new Nikon D5500. There's a lot of them. And we're going to do a different format. What we're going to do is we're going to separate beginners, intermediate users, and advanced. Because a lot of you had given us comments saying, I, I don't want to sit there and listen to a lot of information that I already know, so I want to get right to the stuff I need to know. So you might be an intermediate user or you might be an advanced user. And that way you'll be able to get to the questions that you are looking for and that answer your questions. So this is the way we're going to set it up. We're going to have, again, beginners, intermediate, and advanced. And there's a lot of questions, and I'm going to try to get to all of them. Again, I searched the internet. I searched Amazon questions. I searched eBay questions. I went on to digitalgoja.com's questions, customer service emails. I tried to get all the most pertinent questions that customers were asking about how to work with their Nikon D5500. Again, if this video helps you out, Hit me up with a like button underneath and subscribe to our channel for future sessions, unboxings, and tutorials such as this. And don't forget when you're in Miami, come say hello to me at digitalgoja.com showrooms. And now we're going to do a segment on beginner's questions on how to use the Nikon D5500. Can I shoot video while using the viewfinder of my Nikon D5500? No. Remember, this is still a DSLR. Digital single lens reflex. So when I remove the lens here, notice when you look inside here, that's your reflex mirror. So when you're looking through the viewfinder, you're looking at an optical version of your image. Now, when we switch the camera on and switch to live view, that viewfinder pops out of the way and it now sets itself for video recording. And that's why they give you this beautiful bright screen where now I can go ahead and press the record button and do my video right through there. And remember, they added the touch focusing feature so you can continuously switch back and forth in your focusing while you're doing your video. It's not continuous by itself, you do have to preset it, but it works rather well. It comes into focus pretty quickly. But again, you have to use this screen for your video capability. And again, the beauty of it is it's a nice bright 3.2 inch, so it's fantastic. Does the Nikon D5500 have continuous AF and video? It does have video focus, but it does not work continuously. And I can show you right here in this example. Notice how I can lock the focus there. And right now, let me start recording. And there you go, you see, it's focusing right on the lens. But if I move over to the camera box, which is at a little bit different perspective, it doesn't refocus. I have to touch on there, and then it brings it back into focus. So then when I go ahead and do the same thing with the lens, it's not in focus, so I have to touch it again. And there you go, it brings it into focus. So it does make focusing a little bit easier, especially now with the touch screen, but it is not continuous autofocus. Can I charge my Nikon D5500 through USB? Nope, Nikon. I know where this is coming from. There's a lot of you guys out there that are working with some of the Sony and Samsungs and they're used to doing that. But nope, this is not gonna happen here. Here, what you're gonna use this micro USB adapter is so that you can download your images if you choose to. And that's this connection right there. And then you plug this end into your computer to download your images. What you're gonna do for charging is way more efficient. This works much better. You're going to remove your ENEL 14A battery from your battery compartment and you're going to place it right into this MH24 charger wall wart and you plug it into the wall and when it finishes charging you have a steady light usually about an hour, hour and a half. You're done and your camera is ready to go.
When I put my D5500 on self timer mode, it fires off and then it resets itself. Is that a defect? No, they actually did that because there were a lot of us that, and that's happened to me, we forget to switch it back to one time shooting instead of leaving it on self timer. So you're thinking you're gonna take a shot right away and the camera starts doing the countdown. Now, they put the button totally different. We were used to having these on the top and on the side to keep the camera size smaller. Nikon put the button on the bottom here, so it's on the bottom left, right next to your lens connector. And when you depress that little button, here you go into the menu, which is your release mode, and here is your self timer, which is 10 seconds. So now when you depress the shutter, it starts the countdown. Now, most cameras will beep. I have mine, because that's the default, I have mine on silent, but you still have the little indicator in front that then you know it's time to take a picture, and you better be over there because it snaps it after 10 seconds and now notice that it's back to normal shooting mode it is no longer set back to self timer so you have to go and depress this button again and reset it now if you choose to do a lot of shooting like that i would highly suggest getting yourself a wireless remote and with that you can work with the infrared sensor in the front here and fire off as many times as you choose to but they do give you options, but don't fret. That is not a defect of the camera. It is just a normal operating procedure. Can I rotate the screen on my new Nikon D5500 a full 360 degrees? Yes, you can. If you want to go ahead and do selfies, this is a great feature. Now notice how it swivels out and you can angle it however you desire. But if you want to be in the picture yourself, you can do this, switch it to live view, and you even have the shutter button that allows you to fire off just by touching the screen. Bam, so now you can do selfies with the touch screen right then and there. And of course, look at it, it's complaining and saying, hey, you gotta use a flash, so pop up the flash and Bam. It allows you to do it right then and there. So it's great for doing selfies or wherever you desire. They did a great job with the new 3.2 inch screen. Does the Nikon D5500 have a panoramic mode? No, I'm afraid that's not a feature they put on here. Let's take a look. We have our scene selector. So let's switch it over to scene. And now let's activate the screen, you touch on the corner here, and there are your different settings. You have portrait, landscape, children, sports, close-up, night portrait, night landscape, party indoor, beach snow, sunset, dusk to dawn, pet portrait, candlelight, blossom, autumn colors and food and then you go all the way back to portrait so no they didn't add panoramic on there honestly you would have to work with a really wide angle perspective lens and start taking multiple pictures and then join them in post-production can i change my control and settings through my touch screen on the d5500 yes you can you have a lot of capabilities. Notice how I can change the f-stop by touching the screen here so I can close down or open up my f-stop. And then if I wanna change my shutter speed, I can go ahead and activate that and I can make it slower or faster. And if I go in here into the I menu, I can go ahead and now activate the ISO and again, change that back to the eye menu, activate the white balance, and you can do all the settings there. You can even do flash compensation. There's about 40 different settings that you can do on here. So yes, they gave you incredible options of overriding everything on your camera, or at least the more important ones, right on the touch screen. Good job. Where is the Nikon D5500 manufactured? Well, remember, this is a Japanese corporation, so it is fully engineered 
and design in Japan, but so that they can maintain this world economy where it's a lot more economical to get your product, they've switched over to Thailand and they've been using Thailand for a while now. So notice that both lens and camera are manufactured in Thailand. Why is my 18 to 55 on my Nikon D5500 working in such a slow manner? Well, remember, everything is about exposure. So if you have the camera set to program, for example, P, and you have a very low ISO, like I have here, ISO 100, sometimes if there isn't enough light, your lens is going to start shooting at a really slow shutter speed. Here I have a lot of light so we can still work at this, but let's say for example it's you're not in an environment where you have all this control lighting, it'll pick a really slow shutter speed like one fifth, one eighth of a second and that's where you're going to have a problem. So always keep an eye on your shutter speed there. If you're having issues like that, especially if you're on program, I would highly suggest bumping up your ISO. Again, don't go crazy and overboard. But now, notice how it's picking much faster shutter speeds at all times. And if you are willing to, switch over to the S mode, and that's the shutter priority. So now you can pick the shutter speed accordingly, and it will pick the appropriate f-stop until it gets the correct exposure. So that way you can override and make sure you don't have really long, slow exposures. What is the difference between the Nikon D5500 and the D3300? Well, they do have the same megapixel sensor, but here they went ahead and improved your focusing system. You're now dealing with 39 point AF sensor as opposed to 11 with the D3300. Plus, this one has a swivel screen that has also touchscreen so that you can actually fire off your images just by pressing the shutter. So I can go ahead and if I choose to take a picture, just press the button and it fires away. So I can control it from here. Plus this one also has built-in Wi-Fi. So this is definitely an improvement if you're in the market for a newer version of a Nikon. Again, look at the D5500. Does the Nikon D5500 have built-in memory? No, today's DSLRs have gone to SDXE. That's become the most popular. It's gonna load on the side right here. And you can use all the way up right now and it's gonna keep growing. We're all the way up to a 128 gigabyte. Now notice this is a class 10, plus it also has a designation of SDXE version 2 and the U with the 3 in the middle. That means that this is great for high definition video. Of course your camera does full 1080p at 60 frames per second and it reads and writes up to 150 megabytes per second. So this is a phenomenal card for doing great whether you're doing continuous shooting, RAW and JPEG. I mean notice in just standard JPEG mode you have room for th over 13,000 images on this card. Now you of course don't have to go to such an extreme. There's a lot of us that have something more popular and we've been using these for quite a while because they're the micro SD also in classification 10. Now this one is classification U1 so that means it's not meant for the super high definition videos that we do nowadays like the 1080 and 4K but it's great for shooting in raw format and also in JPEG and it's a standard 32 gigabyte. We have these because we have a lot of us own GoPros and tablets and smartphones that work with the micro SD so you can also take advantage. Notice that this card which already has images on there has room for over 3000 images on my D5500. Does the Nikon D5500 have a built-in flash? Sure does. And even if you're on automatic, you can turn it on, pops up the flash, and then you can go ahead and snap the picture with the flash. If it needs it, it'll use it automatically for you. So it's a great feature. But if you choose to, you do have a hot shoe where you can use a standard flash. This one happens to be a fully manual one from Altura, or you can use 
different ETTL models that are different ITTL models that are out there and now with this you of course have to set this one happens to be manual so now what I have to do is I have to pick the shutter speed for this camera it happens to work great at 1 1 60th of a second and then the flash fires off when I press a button so you have many different options for flash photography with your D5500. Can I use Canon lenses with my Nikon D5500? I'm afraid not. It's a totally different mount and I'll show you right now. Take this guy off. Here is the mount for Nikon and now notice the mount for Canon, completely different. I mean, literally it would actually not be able to fit in there even with an adapter because it's much larger than the flange. Now, you can't do that, but you can acquire other lenses from other manufacturers that have a Nikon mount. Here's a perfect example, this is a Tamron. Now I can go ahead and remove the rear cap. And again, you line it up the same way, the dot to the dot and you twist and you don't let go until you hear that click. That means it's now ready to go. So you now have a 16 to 300 that allows you to work with your Nikon D5500. So I can start out from a super wide angle all the way up to a 300 millimeter telephoto and notice how it focuses. And again, you still have the touch control so I can go ahead and snap the picture that way. So all that works perfectly as long as you get something in a Nikon mount. You cannot cross mount attach. What kind of warranty does my Nikon D5500 come with? Well, if you purchase it from an authorized Nikon dealer, you're going to receive these warranty cards in here. And notice how they say register your product online with NikonUSA.com. And it actually tells you that it is, for example, on the lens, a one year USA limited warranty plus four years USA extended service coverage. And for the camera, it's one year. But these are the ones that you will receive if you purchase it from an authorized Nikon USA USA dealer. The other ones, which are called gray market, they're a yellowish tint and they won't say that. They'll actually tell you international. So it all depends on who you purchase your D5500 from. If you're in the US, always make sure that you purchase it from an authorized Nikon USA dealer. Can I take a picture while recording video with my Nikon D5500? No, and as a matter of fact, it also depends on what mode you're in. It literally won't let you take a picture. So if I now have it set to full auto, which is the green auto there on my command dial, and I activate my live view, and I start recording. Notice it's now recording video. It's not letting me take a picture. I'm pressing the shutter button and nothing's occurring. So in this mode, it doesn't even give you the option of taking the shot. But I'm gonna stop recording. Turn off the camera. And now I'm gonna set it to just standard program mode where it still gives me some overwrite features, but the camera is doing the exposure for me. So again, activate the camera, start recording. But this mode actually allows me to take a picture. Notice it takes a shot, but it stopped your video recording. So you have to press your recording button again to activate your video. So there are certain modes that it doesn't allow you to take the picture at all. And in other ones, it will allow you to take the shot, but it stops your recording feature. Can I look at my images from my Nikon D5500 on my TV set? Yes, you can, but notice that the adapter that you receive from Nikon is a VGA adapter. I don't know how many of us still have VGA TVs or VGA monitors, but that's what you receive. And it's actually going to connect right over here where it says AV out. Notice how that 
area opens up and you attach it here and then you attach it to your three different ports on the back of your ancient TV slash monitor but honestly you know this I don't know I wouldn't use I know that a lot of us have laptops and monitors and TVs that are HD so get yourself one of these this is a mini HDMI to standard HDMI and they actually give you the port on this side right here honestly Nikon are you saving that much money by not providing one of these whatever you can get these at a really reasonable price and it just attaches here and now you connect this section right to your HD monitor or TV. I think that would be the best way to view your full HD video and your high resolution pictures on your TV set. Does my Nikon D5500 come with a strap? Yes, it does come with the standard Nikon DSLR strap which has their logo on it but remember you have many other options I've seen some wrist straps out there that attach to the side and there's even some straps that attach to the bottom that are like a sling design so the camera is I think much more readily available but you do receive your standard Nikon strap with your Nikon D5500 Why do I keep getting an error code with my Nikon D5500? Well, you're probably receiving this kind of error code where you turn on the camera and notice before taking photos, rotate the zoom ring to extend the lens. What they're saying is this is their new version or at least their newest version of their 18 to 55 VR DX G Series 2. And what did they do? They made the lens smaller. So to be able to give you the smaller design, you actually have to press this button and rotate. And there you go. Now the error is gone and you're ready to start shooting. Whether you want pictures or videos, you can now do so with your Nikon D5500. Can I do close-ups with my Nikon D5500? Absolutely, but it all has to do with the lens. Right now, this is the kit lens, the 18 to 55. So it will allow you to get some close-up shots. Preferably, you should get something like this. If you don't want to invest in a macro lens, get yourself a close-up filter lens kit that allows you to do extra magnification with your existing lens. But let me show you, if you have neither, you can still do it. We're gonna go and set the camera to the scene mode right there. And then we're going to activate it. Remember, this guy still has a touch screen. I love that. And you're going to set it to this one, to the little flower. That's your close-up shooting mode. So now when we have it set to that, notice how I can go ahead and get closer and take a picture of something like that. See? And that allows you to do a close-up shot. Very simple. So you do have that capability with your Nikon D5500 and your standard kit lens. What is the best mode to set my Nikon D5500 if I'm starting out as a beginner? Well, they thought of you and they had you in mind and here it is. It's the auto mode. Notice a little green one there. I know the manufacturers don't like me saying that, but this is my opinion. I honestly think that that's your cell phone mode. This is where the camera now does everything for you. So in that mode, it knows if you're going to be doing close-ups, it switches over to the close-up setting and pops up the flash. If you're doing portraitures, it switches over to face detection. The only thing you have to do is zoom. You have to compose your shot by zooming back and forth. But everything else is handled for you. Your focus, your ISO, your shutter speed, your f-stop, everything else is fully automatic. Can I magnify the images on my Nikon D5500 screen? Yes, you can. Watch, let's hit the playback button here. And here we are, we have an image and this is one of the beauties of touchscreen. You can do it this way where you can zoom in and out or you also have the plus and minus button on the side. 
So they made it really simple. I like this feature because guess what? We're all used to it from our smartphones, so why not do it on our DSLRs too? Can I change the amount of self-timer shots on my Nikon D5500? Yes, you can. We've had questions where, oh, I think there's a problem with my camera. It stops after one shot and the defaults, well, that's the automatic default. It does set itself back to normal shooting. But if you want to do multiple self-timers, let's turn on the camera first. Remember, your button here for your drive is on the side now, totally different than before. And now we go over here and set it to, nope, wrong one, try it again, set it to self-timer. But now I can go ahead and go into the menu and we're going to go into the pencil, which is the custom settings menu. That's the second icon there. And we're going to scroll down to where it says timers. Keep forgetting that this is actually a touch screen. And then we can go over to where it says self timer and number one you can change the second delay so you can go to as quickly as two seconds or as long as 20 seconds and here when you touch here you can now go all the way up to a maximum of nine self timer shots so if you want to stand over there and strike a pose for a series of shots or you're doing a large family group gathering, that's a great feature where you can do multiple shots and you don't have to go back and reset it every single time. Do I need a lens to be able to record video or take photos with my Nikon D5500 DSLR? Yes, you do. If you were one of the ones that purchased just a body like this in this configuration, it still can't take any kind of imaging. You have to attach a lens on here. This is not an all-in-one or a point-and-shoot. This is a DSLR. So, of course, they have the kit versions that come with something popular like this, like the 18-55 VR, or you can use many other lenses from other manufacturers as long as they have a Nikon mount. So, you can get prime lenses like this, a 24 millimeter 1.4, you can get all-in-one zoom lenses like this, which is a 16 to 300 millimeter. That means you really never have to change lens. You can get super fish eyes like this, for example, an eight millimeter fish eye. Or you can get standard lenses that are very popular for the crop sensor user, like a 30 millimeter 1.4. So you have many different alternatives for your Nikon D5500 DSLR, but you have to put a lens on it. And now we're going to begin a segment on intermediate questions about how to work with your Nikon D5500 DSLR. Is my Nikon D5500 weather sealed? No, that's how they maintain the really economical price point. It's very well made, but if you notice here, there are no O-rings or on the lens itself, which this is the standard kit lens, the 18-55 VR version 2, or anywhere on the body itself. They do place those features on their larger bodies. I haven't seen a Nikon of this size with weather sealing yet. Might be in the works, but this is not the model. Does the Nikon D5500 have special effect modes? Yes, they did. And again, they're doing rather well with this. They put it right on the control panel, on your control button. There's your effects setting. And then you activate it with the touchscreen. And there you go. Photo illustration, pop, vivid, night vision. If you want to do some incredible low light, longer exposures, you can set it to that. Here's your low key, high key, your silhouette, your selective color, where you can pick the color and switch it to black and white for everything else. So again, they gave you a lot of abilities with the special effects control button. Can I work with my older Nikon battery for the new D5500? Well, you can go back to as early as the ENEL 14. 
that's what I have right here. This worked with the Nikon D3100s and the 3000s. So this was a very popular battery. The new one that you get with the camera is the ENEO 14A, which bumps up the milliamp to 1,230, 8.9 watt hours, compared to 1,030 milliamps, 7.7 .7 watt hours. But guess what? It works fine. So I can pop this right in here and turn on my camera and it works perfectly. So if you do have some of the older ENEL 14 batteries which were meant for the previous models of the D series in Nikon, absolutely. Now you have to be careful, there's still some really old batteries out there like the much larger ENEL 3 batteries. Those have been discontinued for a while and they pretty much will not function in any of the current cameras on the market now. But again, if you stick with the ENEL 14 series batteries, they'll be able to work fine on your Nikon D5500. Can I add an external microphone to my Nikon D5500? Yes, you can. Nikon thought that out. They always give you the built-in microphone and notice that you have a left and right channel, but there's a lot of us that prefer having an external mic, so they went ahead and gave you a plug right there. So that means your 3.5 jack plugs in right there, and then you can go ahead and connect your condenser microphone right on the top and now you can go ahead and get some really good audio to go along with your full 1080p video. No, they did not give you a headphone jack. Who knows, that might be the next version that they come up with, but right now it's just a microphone jack. Does my Nikon D5500 have image stabilization? Well, not in the body. I know where you're coming from. Some other manufacturers out there like Olympus, Sony, Panasonic, they're thinking, wait, let's put the image stabilization on the body as opposed to on the lens. Well, Nikon is still thinking, they're saying they're having better results by putting the VR in the actual lens. So you have to look for lenses that have this designation. It has to say VR. This one has vibration reduction that compensates for movement. Here's another Nikon lens, this is an oldie that I have here, but this does not have VR. There's no VR designation, so it does not have image stabilization. And remember, there's other manufacturers that make lenses in the Nikon mount. Here's a very popular Tamron. This is the 16 to 300, and they happen to call theirs VC, vibration control. So as long as you get a lens that has an image stabilization system in it, it'll work fine in low light situations and wherever you are not allowed to use a monopod or a tripod. What is the highest ISO that I can use my Nikon D5500? Well, let's take a look. Let's hit the info screen and let's touch over here where it says ISO and notice that you start from as low as 100 ISO and wow, you can bump it up all the way to 25,600 ISO. Now remember, you have to be really careful with these super high ISOs and a crop sensor camera. You tend to create a lot of noise, even though they do have a great noise reduction system in this new camera. I just wouldn't go into these super high ISOs, but it is available. Does my Nikon D5500 have a GPS system? Nope, they went ahead and removed that from this model. They did have it on the previous model. So the D5300 has a built-in GPS. With this one, you have to get what is called the Nikon GP1A adapter, and that's gonna attach over here on the side, like so, and there's where you attach your GPS so you have the GPS capability, but guess what? You do have the added benefit of Wi-Fi. Remember, this model does come with Wi-Fi. So honestly, you could link the camera to your smartphone and that way put the geo data from your smartphone directly onto your images when you download it onto your smartphone or tablet. So you can go around it that way somehow.
Can I control the beeping sound with the focus lock and turn it off on my Nikon D5500? Yes, they gave you actually a good amount of override capabilities on that. All right, so turn our camera on. Let's click the menu button. And notice right here in the little tools, you have your camera, you have your custom setting. Go straight down to where it says the little wrench there, the tool. And notice when you go further down, you have beep options. So click on that. Of course, the default is on. And let's activate that folder. You can actually turn it off with the touch controls only or completely off. So if you turn it completely off, there we go, there's no noise. And you can also change the pitch tone. So if you want to keep it on, but you want to change the tone, you can switch it to low or you can switch it to high. So it's up to you. But if you want it off, which is the way I prefer it, just completely turn it off and it still focuses, but you no longer have that little beeping noise. I'll turn it on live view so you can see how it still does the focusing. So there you go, focus lock because it turned to green, but no noise. Can I control my Nikon D5500 wirelessly? Well, of course, you can go ahead and get one of those little IR remotes, these guy right here, and that's line of sight. But the cool thing is to be able to control your camera from your smartphone. Now, first of all, you have to go to the App Store. It's for Android and iOS. I happen to have an Android device here. And you have to download that right there, which is the Nikon Mobility app. You have to make sure you install this in your cell phone or tablet and then you have to go into your menu and notice that you have a Wi-Fi setting in the little tool one so scroll down there I keep forgetting that we have touchscreen Wi-Fi and you want to activate it turn it on and then you have to go into your settings of course on here and activate your Wi-Fi and you want to look for your Nikon camera so once you have it connected guess what now I'm ready to go ahead and take photos so I can go ahead and I now have a live view of what my camera sees right on my smartphone and you can go ahead and change exposure or take pictures so what you want to do is you want to have notice that you have a toggle there have it moved over to the smartphone one and now you can go ahead and take pictures by pressing the camera icon on there and it downloads the files automatically to your smartphone so boom there it is so now you can actually look at your images and you can zoom in look at detail zoom back out so fantastic way to be able to control your Nikon D5500 wirelessly because remember this is creating its own Wi-Fi hotspot now doing that you got to remember take extra batteries with you because that is going to put a strain on your battery life so always carry extra batteries with you when you're using your Wi-Fi Can I use all-in-one zooms with my Nikon D5500? Absolutely. Now Nikon themselves make an 18 to 200 and I think they're up to two different versions of the 18 to 300 VR. But if you're on a budget, those are going to be a little bit out of your price range, I think. If you're looking for a little bit more economical alternative and this happens to give you a little bit more bang for the buck, Guess what I have here? This is a Tamron 16 to 300, all in one, and this one is in a Nikon mount. So of course, you can now remove your kit lens, or if you purchase the camera body by itself, here you go. You attach this guy, and again, this is going to connect to your camera the same way as if it was an original. You're going to look for that little white dot, see that on the body? And then you're going to look for the white dot on the lens, line it up twist and don't ever let go until you hear that click and there you have it now you have a 16 to 300 millimeter all in one lens so you have a nice wide angle and a very decent telephoto
and I work with all lenses with my Nikon D5500, well, you can work with any lens that has, again, a Nikon mount. And you can work even with the older lenses. Here's a perfect example. This guy is a really nice collectible. This is a Nikon E-series 28mm f2.8. This is fully mechanical. What does that mean? That means, like, look, your f-stop is over here and you have to do manual focus. But the mount is still the same. So let's remove the 18 to 55 that it came with. And now, always put the body, the rear cap back on so we keep the lenses nice and clean. And now we're gonna mount this guy on here. And there's the white mount connector for your body. And then on here, look for the little black dot. So when you line those up, turn. Again, don't remove until you hear that click. And now look at what happens. Now, this is the important thing. Your camera has to be set on manual because the camera now doesn't even know you have a lens on there. But look at that. Let me open it up. See? Now, you have to do your manual focus here. And notice how I can bring the subject right into focus. And I can set my aperture here, depending on the exposure. Again, it's not going to register because you don't have any electrical contact. But I can go ahead and take the shot. And there's your exposure. So it works perfectly. And you can also take advantage of other lenses that are on the market that are fully mechanical. Here happens to be an Altura Photo 8mm fisheye for Nikon. And again, this works the same way. We're going to remove the lens. So we're going to take off that legacy lens, as they like to call them. And now we're going to connect this one. And again, line up the white dot and line up the little red dot that they have here. Twist, don't let go until you hear that click. Activate your camera. We again have to go back to manual setting. Turn on the live view. I'm doing that. I usually don't use a live view, but guess what? If you're doing video, this is a great video lens. And notice how it changes that ultra wide perspective. I mean, if I actually turn this around, let's put this guy on selfie mode. And look at that. I'm in the picture. So it's picking me up. Hello. So this is a great way to get some incredible lenses for your Nikon D5500 and not spend a ton of money. How many scene modes does my Nikon D5500 have? Well, let's take a look. What you have to do is you have to set your camera to the scene icon. And now we can touch on the screen here. That's incredible. I love this touch screen technology. So let's activate it and then we can move around. So we have sports, you have child, you have landscape, you have portrait, here you have food, you have autumn colors, blossom, candlelight, pet portraits, dusk and dawn, sunset, beach and snow, party and indoor, night landscape, night portrait, close-up, and started back at sports. So they gave you plenty of options where you can now set the scene mode that you desire so that the camera works a little bit better for you. And now we're going to begin a segment on questions for the advanced user for the Nikon D5500 DSLR. Can I set the frames per second on my video recording with my D5500? Yes, you can. They gave you full control. First, we turn on the camera and we have to hit our menu button and we go here to menu and we want to scroll all the way down. Oh, you can do it the old fashioned way like this or you can do the touch screen and notice that you have the final folder there that says movie settings. Click on that and then you click on frame rate. Boom. There. And there you go. You can go all the way up to full 1080p at 60 frames per second or you can switch it over to a smaller size at 30 frames per second. 
And I believe that's it, yes. You have the smallest resolution is 640 by 424 at 30 frames per second. But honestly, that's the way to go. And you also can change your movie quality to high quality. And here's your microphone setting, whether you want to turn the microphone on or off. So they gave you wind reduction and you even have manual movie settings so that you can go ahead and override your exposure for your movie recording. So they gave you an incredible amount of shooting capability for your videos. Does my Nikon D5500 allow me to do time lapse? Yes, they did. They finally incorporated this feature and it's a great feature to have in your camera. You no longer need third party adapters. Let's go into our menu and notice in the camera shooting menu, almost to last, you have interval timer shooting. Activate that and you can set your intervals. You can set start options, stop everything. You can set the camera up. Now the important thing is, remember, you're gonna need a constant power source. Plus, it's gonna definitely have to be on a tripod. This is something that does not work handheld. But they gave you that capability where now you can do some incredible time-lapse imaging with your Nikon D5500 without further investment in an attachment. If I want to shoot manual with my Nikon D5500, does the LCD still show me information and exposure value? Absolutely, and I'm a big fan of that. I'm old school, I love manual. So notice right now I have it set on manual and I can change my shutter speed here with the touchscreen. Wow, incredible technology, very nice. And I can change my f-stop. So I can now go ahead and choose whatever f-stop I want and of course, I can also change my ISO since I'm working on full manual, I can go ahead and reset that. But the nice thing is, notice when you are looking here on the screen, it's actually telling you that I'm overexposing by a considerable amount of stops. So what I should do here is bump up my shutter speed and look at what happens. It still shows you how much of an exposure you need to compensate for. Oh, there we go, I went a little bit too much, so I went to underexposure. So, it doesn't leave you hanging. It does give you all your information in that beautiful, bright new 3.2 inch screen that they added. Can I shoot low light video even with the standard lens on my Nikon D5500? Well, I'm a big believer in LED lights. I've always believed in working with a separate light source, but I have to understand there's a lot of us that are going to shoot video and we're going to do natural lighting. So what did Nikon do? They bumped this guy up. You can go all the way up to 25,600 ISO. So if I set it to that and I switch to live view and start recording video, notice with the lighting in here in the studio, this is picking up everything with no problem. And notice how it's focusing way back over there. And it still has the capability of bringing out some detail at this high 25,600 ISO. So yes, you can shoot at very high ISOs with the Nikon D5500. Is the buffer on the Nikon D5500 fast enough for fast action sport shooting? Well, yes. And also you got to take into consideration what's very important is in the speed of your card. Here I happen to have one of the faster cards that are on the market now for SDXC. It's a 1000X. It's 150 megabytes per second. So when I place this really fast card in this camera and I go crazy, and move it all the way up to 4,000 shutter speed and I switch it to my high speed continuous shooting I can go ahead and this 
it's not going to slow down. It'll go all the way up to five frames per second, so I can stop action at any point. Plus, remember, you do have the scene selector where you can go ahead and switch it over to, again, your sports mode, and it's going to pick a faster shutter speed, but it's all relevant depending on the ISO and the lighting situation. That's why I like to go on manual and bump it all the way up to one four thousandth of a second at continuous shooting. You should be able to capture any kind of sporting event. Can I do bracketing with my Nikon D5500? Yes, and they gave you options. I love options. Let's go into the menu. All right, and we wanna go into our custom setting menu. Notice that that's the one with a little pencil. And you wanna go down to folder E, which is the one that says bracketing and flash. Click on that, and then go all the way down to where it says auto bracketing set. So the first one is exposure bracketing. Again, three shots, one over, one what it thinks is on the money, and one underexposed. White balance bracketing. Again, three different settings for white balance. And advanced D lighting, which is the one that gives you the compensation for backlight and low light situations. And you again get three different exposures for that. Now remember to do this, you have to take three shots or you have to have your camera set on continuous shooting so that it'll do the three shots automatically for you. But you do have many options for bracketing with your Nikon D5500. Can I program my Nikon D5500's touchscreen with different function settings? Absolutely, and they did a fantastic job with this. All right, let's go into our menu. And notice that we're going to go into the custom settings menu. We're going to scroll all the way down. I keep saying scroll, and remember, you actually have a touchscreen, so you can just click on it. And notice the first one on there that says assign function button now this is using the function button on the camera so that's this button here on the side but i think this other one is much better i actually think it's way cooler so now you have assign touch function so when you click on that look at what opens up you now can actually program your screen to do all this while you're looking through your viewfinder fantastic idea my favorite one is the focus point selection because I've used that at some of the uh, the mirrorless cameras so as you're looking through here and you have your eye right up to the viewfinder and notice that this is a sensor system so it's made so that as soon as you put your eye up to it it turns off the screen so with this feature you can actually go ahead and move your focusing points across the screen while looking through here some people have gotten used to doing it with their thumb. I have a small hand, but people with larger hands have been able to do it right with the thumb as they're looking through. Other people have had to use their other hand, but guess what? The important thing is that you want to remember that you have to move side to side. It doesn't do anything this way for some of the settings, except for the focusing point where you have your entire focusing area, you move it all across. But let's go to another setting. So if you do auto bracketing, viewfinder grid, aperture, HDR, active lighting, your ISO, all those other ones, you have to remember that you have to move your finger from right to left. There's none there. So your next one after aperture, that's it, you're done, there's none. Not that we need any more, because this is pretty awesome that we can do all this, but remember, you move your finger across the screen as you're looking through the viewfinder to be able to access your touch custom function settings. Can I do a custom white balance with my Nikon D5500? Absolutely, they've never taken that feature out and they're gonna keep it in their newest flagship in the prosumer camera. Now, the easiest way to do it is to activate your screen and touch on the white balance and notice how you have your auto setting and here's your pre and they show you an example on how to do it you want to make sure that you take a photograph of a white piece of paper in the particular lighting situation that you're in 
That way the camera is going to store that as your preferred custom balance in that particular lighting situation and it'll keep doing that until you switch out of the preset and go back to another setting. Can I set my focusing points while looking through the viewfinder on my Nikon D5500? Yes, you can do it the old-fashioned way. I love how I'm saying this, old-fashioned way. This was the way we did it two, three years ago. And you're gonna use the toggle wheel here to move it around. But my favorite is now using the function touch system where you can program, remember this has a proximity sensor. So now you can program your D5500 that whenever you're looking through your viewfinder, you can just move your thumb across and change your focusing points. Let's see if I can create this. Uh, it's gonna be tricky, but I'm gonna try to see if maybe I can get the camera to focus through here. Well, you get the gist of it. If you look in there, you can see that little dot. So while you're moving your thumb around, straight across like this, you can do so with your thumb. You can move that focusing point around and lock it on the subject matter that you want. Believe me, it is a lot easier than it seems because once you have it up to your eye, you can do it with either your other hand or you can do it with your thumb. And I have a pretty small hand, but I have the capability of doing it with my thumb as I'm looking through the viewfinder. Great feature. Can I change the number of focus points on my new Nikon D5500? Yes, you can. And they put this in the menu system. When you activate your screen, you notice that there it shows you that you have it on autofocus and all 39 points are activated. So let's go into the menu and we're going to have to go into the, notice how we have the first one, which is the camera. We're going into the second one. That's the one that has the custom settings with the little pencil. I always keep forgetting that this is a touch screen. Hit the autofocus and there we go. We can now change the number of focusing points from 39 to 11. Honestly, I don't know why you would want that, but you do have that capability. I would prefer having the 39 autofocus points. And then you also have the capability of turning your AF illuminator on or off depending on low light situations. So that's how you can control it. Plus here's where you can change the way you focus, whether you do it on release or if you have it on continuous focus at all times. Can I connect a monitor to my Nikon D5500 for external viewing? Absolutely. You do have right on the side over here, right behind this port, there you go. That is a mini HDMI port. So that means when you hook up a mini HDMI cable and you go to another HDMI cable, like usually on monitors or on laptops or on even the portable monitors, you'll be able to use this on live view. Watch, we're gonna demonstrate. I'm going to now use the HDMI cable that I'm used to using and I'm gonna connect it directly to this camera and show you how it looks. All right, so now I'm going to connect the HDMI, mini HDMI cable to the side here. It just goes straight in, don't force it. You don't wanna damage that port. The cables are economical enough, but that port is expensive to repair. Now I'm going to activate the live view on the camera and turn on my monitor. And notice how, there we go. I'm gonna move over here. And here it is recording right from the camera and you can view it right on the monitor. Of course, you might not wanna use a huge monitor like this. Oh, look at that echo, echo, echo. It's a tunnel. Woohoo! that was funky. But, you know, if you have the option of working in a controlled environment, then absolutely. And you can get, go ahead and connect it to a huge monitor like that. But most of the time you're gonna to wanna to be out on the go and connect it to one of the smaller portable monitors that are out there but you do have that option. So it gives you a great feature for both stills and videographers. Mm -hmm.